Power, that's what we need. Power to live the abundant John 10, 10 Christian life. Power to live a life of love, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. Power to live the life that Jesus promised us. And how do we get that power? Well, Jesus actually, or Paul, excuse me, actually told us. He said, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. First for the Jew, and then also for the Gentile. The gospel is the power to live the life that God called us to live. So it's very clear, very important, excuse me, that we under, understand the gospel. And uh, this may seem like second nature to you, but uh, my life was forever changed years ago when I heard a message by John Ortberg where he started with this very question. He started with the question, what is the gospel as Jesus and the early disciples preached it. And then he went through a whole riff of verses where it says that Jesus went out and preached the gospel of the kingdom. And he sent the disciples out to preach the gospel of the kingdom. And he taught us to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And he told us to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And it's clear that the gospel is all about the kingdom of God. And in another video, we're actually going to talk about that. I want to talk today about how we enter into life, into the kingdom. And John or Jesus was very clear about this in the gospel of John, where he says, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born again. And born again is how we start the Christian life and it is the power to live the Christian life. And a lot of different descriptions of this, but I think the easiest one is just to return again and again to John 3:16, perhaps the most famous sentence in all of the English language, um, where, where we're told God so loved the world. This is the power of God, to believe that you are loved by God. Nothing you could do would make God love you more. Nothing you could do would make God love you less. Uh, God loves you absolutely, unconditionally, he loves you completely. God so loved the world and the power of God is believing that we do not come to God to earn our way into his favor, to try to be good enough to get him to like us. But we start our day every day with our Bible on our lap and we start our day in prayer, believing that God is a God who loves us, who adores us, who has our picture on his refrigerator. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. And why did he give his son? Why did he give his son to pay the price for our sins? He gave his uh, son on the cross because we are sinners. I am a great sinner and I need a great savior. This is the power of the gospel. This is the power of the cross to believe that I am loved and that believe, believe that I am a sinner in need of a great savior. And God has sent that great savior in the person of his son, Jesus Christ. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, his only begotten son, that whoever believes, whoever believes, and we're going to do a whole other uh, video on this, on, on believing. Uh, but the big idea of believing is it's not believing that God exists. The devils believe that God exists. It's believing that God is a rewarder, believing that God is good. It's believing in Jesus. I like to say it this way. It's believing in Jesus like I believe in tennis. And what I mean by that is if you were to look in the trunk of my car right now, you'd find three or four tennis rackets. You'd find a new can of tennis balls and a pair of tennis shoes. So just in case I get in the mood to play tennis somewhere, I've got it in, in I, I'm, I'm ready to go. And uh, I've been to the U.S. Open tennis tournament twice in, in, in New York because I believe in tennis. They don't have to force me to do this. I don't have to earn my, it doesn't, believing in tennis does not mean that I, uh, that I believe that tennis exists. I mean, I think tennis is a great sport. I think you ought to play some tennis. I think you ought to try some tennis. And I believe in tennis and I believe in Jesus. And I believe Jesus is a wonderful way to live and following him is a wonderful way to live. And your life will be infinitely better if you follow him. And if you believe that, if you believe that, it is the power of God, the power of the gospel to transform you. It will change your life uh, if you believe that, that, that he exists. And so I just close by asking you, do, do you believe? Not do you believe that God exists. Do you believe that he's a rewarder? Hebrews eleven six 6 says, anyone who would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. 
we must believe that God is good, that he is a good, good father. And it is always in our best interest to live the Christian life. We must come to love the Christian life or we will never come to live the Christian life. This is the power of the gospel, to love the Christian life, to believe that God is a good, good father who loves us, who has our best interest in, in, in mind. And when you believe that, you will have power to live the Christian life and it will get a whole lot easier. Thank <laughs> you.